The throttle position sensor frequently uses the same electrical connector as the throttle actuator motor. But in some cases, it may have a separate one. It's immaterial. They are potentiometers that measure motor movement. And it's very simple. We covered this potentiometer operation in the accelerator pedal position sensor section. If you want to look at diagnosing step by step, you can go through that. It's the same schematic. We've got five volts. We've got ground. We've got a wiper. If you need a review, we don't want to beat you up twice on the same subject. Go back and look at that. But let's talk about the relationship of the voltage going up and down. Because TPS starts out, in this example, as a low voltage and goes high. TPS2 starts out high and goes to a low voltage as the throttle is opened. You see they crisscross in the middle of the chart. And they're both linear. They do the same thing. Now, theoretically speaking, and this is pure theory that came from a, one of the training sessions at the manufacturers, if you add the two values together, they equal approximately 5 volts. Now, this works fine as long as you understand the word approximate. We'll talk more about real-world voltage shortly. But let's see how we look at these and what they look like. First of all, we've got two different traces here. We've got a blue and we've got a red. We've got the red starting high and going low when the throttle's open, the blue going low and going high. We know that because right here we go wide open throttle and what was low becomes high in the blue and the red goes low. They swap ends of the circle. We hold a steady throttle relatively and then we move it slightly and you see one go up, one go down. They're going opposite directions. Down here, we snap the throttle open again. So you can see a number of places we've opened the throttle up when we've looked at it. The other thing I want you to look at, we've talked about the motor moving back and forth against the spring and causing a little bit of noise. But there is some noise present on both of these sensors that does not show up anywhere else. Now you see a small bit of the noise down here in the blue trace. Notice we have two significant spikes there that do not show up in the red trace. That is fairly normal. We do get a little bit of noise. Here's some up here in the red trace that are going positive that don't show up down in the blue trace. What we're trying to say is here, don't overreact. As long as there's no significant, big, long-lasting changes, these tend to operate fairly well and give you data. If you don't want to bother with the noise, don't want to have to interpret it and want to look only at long-term changes, maybe you want to look at scan data. Here's scan data we've recorded. We've gotten rid of all this, the bitters back and forth. We've got rid of all the changes, and it's smoothed out a little bit. This has got some averaging built in. Here we've opened the throttle up. You see them change. We're doing the same thing we did with the lab scope. But remember... Lab scopes are very good at finding things that may cause intermittent problems that may not show up as easily in scan data. Here's a sweep. We've gone from closed throttle to wide open throttle. Here in the middle, we've got one at 180, one at 309. They total 4.89 volts. Now, that doesn't measure up the magic 5 volts we're expecting. It's really 11 millivolts different. Let's not get crazy. There are no two throttle position sensor potentiometers built absolutely precisely alike. There will be minor differences in them. Don't overreact to this. It's approximately 5 volts. If we're looking at 475 or 460, that would be a different situation. There would be something wrong, but not when it's just this close. So here's the real world. We could have done the same thing by measuring it on the lab scope, but uh, we did it here because it's easier. We're going to use the same procedures for diagnosing these as we did accelerator pedal. Look at that because we talk about intermittent problems and how to look for intermittent problems and how what happens momentarily may take, may last longer in certain operating conditions. And don't forget to look up the diagnostic trouble codes. Let the trouble codes help you diagnose when they're there. 
but understand, as a section we go through in the trouble codes, what the meaning of them are. Are they high? Are they low? Do they not correlate? Are they out of range? Understand and pay attention to the meaning. Don't start working just by simply saying there is something wrong with TPS sensor 1. Know what it is exactly. And be sure you understand the fault modes. They can explain symptoms as reported by your motorist and will help you direct you to an area that will help you solve the problem. 